want to talk today about karma. I put that in quotes because it's an awful word. It really is. It's one of those words that everybody has a definition for, but few have really thought about it. Uh, they've just accepted that these specific definitions. Um, the most common thought about karma is it's the universe either punishing or rewarding you for being a good little boy or girl. Um, and that is, as usual, <laughs> bull. It's <laughs> just nothing but bullshit. Um, the universe doesn't reward you. The universe doesn't punish you. The universe simply adapts to what you do in the world. Um, and that's really the, the essence of karma, is the universe is adapting to what you have projected and expressed into it. That's what it does. The universe is an incredibly integrated place. Everything is connected to everything else. And everything we do impacts the universe at large. It, uh, it influences, it, it seriously impacts um, the world around us. And so karma is really the world, you know, accepting what we are putting out and, you know, whoa, adjusting itself. Um, and the basis of that adjustment um, goes back to what I've said before, that the nature of existence is the one self experiencing the present moment of time and space. Um, everything is the one self experiencing itself in th throughout all of creation throughout all of the universe, the whole. That is how the one self uh, interacts with everything, by becoming, by like looking through my eyes at you and this camera. Um, so that's really the point of existence, is to express the one self fully in each moment of our existence. That's difficult for human beings. Um, some of the more complex, uh, more astrally complex uh, beings um, have the capacity to interfere with the one self um, expressing itself um, in the present moment. Um, for human beings, it's all about our emotions, um, how we feel about things, how we feel about the things we do um, really determines the impact that those actions, those expressions of ourself, will have on the rest of the universe. Um, when the one self shines through uh, clearly, there is... Boy, how to say these things. That's always the difficulty, is how to put them in words. I feel like a physicist describing some obscure a bit of cosmology or something. Um, <clears throat> so, there is an astral flaw, as it were. Um, some of us can, instead of having just emotional responses, we have emotional reactions to things. And it's in that reacting versus just responding, in other words, this natural flow of emotion is 
perverted, as it were, uh, to, whoa, emotional reaction, uh, reactive emotions that most often go in a different direction than the original emotion that uh, we are reacting to. The, um, so, when we do that, it, it, we obscure um, the oneself. We sort of are preventing oneself from clearly expressing itself in the present moment of our existence. Um, oh, I don't know if I said that well enough at all. Um, any rate, so karma then is the universe um, responding and adapting to our inability to let the oneself flow into existence. So that really affects the universe around us. It really affects it um, in ways that we can't even imagine. It's, it's very destructive. Um, so the universe has to adapt to that destructive moment in time and space. And it adapts. It, it adjusts itself to us. Um, the universe always adjusts itself to everything. That's how we are. We all adjust to our environment and the powers in our environment. Um, so there's nothing unusual about this at all. But, you know, we have recognized through experience that our actions have these consequences and our bad actions have specifically bad consequences in our life. Our good actions have good consequences in our life. So we developed the idea of karma. But in this idea of karma is the idea of a judge. Something is judging that we did bad, so it's making sure that something bad happens in our life. That's not what happens. There is a consequence to our blocking the oneself. That's just the consequence. You know, um, that's just how the universe has to respond in order to give us the experiences that we need to break down those blockages to the oneself. Uh, it's the most loving thing that the universe does for us. It adjusts itself so that we have yet another opportunity to learn this lesson about letting the oneself out and letting it flow, letting it through. So, you know, it's... The only one judging us is us, you know? <laughs> the great judges of Saturn, you know, all this kind of stuff. Those are just aspects of our psyche that are devoted to judging our every little action, you know, throughout life. But that's an internal judgment. That's not the universe judging us. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't give a shit about us. Not in that way. Um... But, at the same time, it's willing, it's not willing, it must, uh, it's a law of nature here, it must make adjustments in itself to accommodate what we have expressed. And when we express that blocking, it makes certain adjustments. On the other hand, when we let the oneself through, the I manifest through our actions, through our attitudes, through who we are in the world, it, the universe opens for us. It doesn't have to adjust itself to lead us to a specific lesson that we need to learn. It just opens itself to us. And that's a very different experience for a human being. 
to be in harmony with the universe. That's good karma. That, I mean, it, it feels good. Um, when we are a good person, when we do kind things, um, you know, the universe, again, responds in kind, you know, it, it, it shows us kind things. Um, yeah, that's karma. It's our guide. I mean, whoa, if you feel a wave of bad karma coming at you, it's the universe saying, hey, this needs to change. Well, not only needs to, it will. You know, it will change. The universe is eternally persistent in making us change. It's what it does. It's what we do as incarnate beings, but specifically as human beings. Now, most beings in the universe don't have this relationship with the universe because for them the I is just always expressing itself and clearly um, just coming out through their pores as it were. Um, it seems to be only in creatures that have a more complex astral structure. It's not every astral structure is the same. Uh, the astral structure of this coffee cup is very different than a human astral structure. Um, but we both have, you know, an astral body. So it seems to be only, from what I can tell, um, the more complex, astrally complex beings. Um, so on the Earth, that's a very small proportion of us beings who have this relationship, this karma uh, relationship with the universe. Um, yeah. And I, I, I don't think humans were always this way. Um, all cultures, all parts of the world have ancient, truly ancient stories of a time uh, when humans lived in perfect harmony with the rest of the world around us. We could speak to the animals and the plants and the rocks and it was all harmonious, you know. Um, and then, at some point, things changed. Um, I don't know what that thing was, um, but we started having um, inharmonious emotional reactions. Um, and this is where, I mean, it's in our emotional reactive nature um, that we... Uh, I have to make changes in our character. You know, all of our character traits are basically uh, down to our reactive emotions in one way or another. Um, so this is where we have to grow, we have to learn. And karma can be a very helpful guide. It really can. It can tell you when you're doing things right when you're getting it right, and the universe is responding in that way that you, you know, we all recognize, or when things need to uh, be addressed inside, internally. Uh, the universe lets you know ra very rapidly. I mean, uh, we think of these really, really nasty people in the world, and we think, well, you know, where's their bad karma? You know, how come they're living on, you know, $35 billion worth of, you know, yacht in the Pacific? You know, I mean, how come they have the good life? You know, they're doing such horrible things. Well, you know, we really can't see all that's happening inside of them. You know, uh, are they really happy? Or... Are they really struggling? And 
like I said, the universe is eternally persistent. So, the, the karmic uh, response from the universe can take lifetimes, lifetimes to manifest. It, you know, it's something, some lessons take us just forever to learn. We're stubborn. We're as stubborn as the universe is. You know, and so, sometimes these patterns, these so-called karmic patterns, repeat lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Um, now, karma is different from <clears throat> the continuity, these threads of continuity that weave through time and space, that I've spoken about before, and there are way, threads of continuity that weave through our lifetimes. Um, these are different than karma. They're not the universe responding to, you know, how we are in the world. They are, they have to do with the magnetic nature of essential meaning and groupings of essential meaning that make up different individual cells attracting each other and weaving together throughout the fabric of time-space. They weave themselves together and that's often mistaken for karma. Um, it, it, it can, that relationship will build karma in, a, a, in the human context um, but that, that's different than that actual weaving together. Um, and they can, that weaving can be for very significant reasons in the, uh, the incarnated lifetimes of those individual selves. If that made any sense at all. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. So I guess that's pretty much it on karma. I hope that's uh, made it a little clearer for you. Um, you're not being judged, <laughs> except by yourself. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.